بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Before we begin, I have a question for everybody. Has anyone here um, You being a Muslim, have it, was it because you accepted Islam or you were you, it wasn't because you were born to a Muslim family? Any? No problem. Okay. So um, everybody basically was born into a Muslim family, right? Okay. I wasn't. All right. Born into a Christian family. I accepted Islam in 1993. And the reason why I ask that question is because if I can learn it, you definitely can learn it. Okay? Most of you, when you were born, the first thing that your parents did was what? Call that dan in your ear, right? You heard Arabic words all your life, okay? Um, it seems like most of the students here, their families are from maybe Pakistan. So what to do is your first language or maybe second language. And Urdu has so many Arabic words. Matter of, uh, matter of fact, many of the Urdu speakers who um, go out and they pursue learning Arabic, they speak Arabic better and just, just as better than the Arab, okay? So it's not difficult, all right? If I, if I did it, you definitely could do it, okay? Um, so, um, like I mentioned before, before most of the students came, that um, I know that you guys are college students, so I'm going to go at your pace, all right? If I'm giving too much information or, uh, you know, it's just too much on you, it's overwhelming, just let me know and I'll slow up the pace because, number one, we don't want any dropouts. Why? Because we know that the Quran was sent down in the Arabic language. Allah says, It is an obligation on every single Muslim to learn Arabic. As Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah said, because of this ayah, Allah said that we sent down the Quran in what? In Arabic. So that what? So you can understand. So the only way for you to understand the Quran is in the Arabic. Because a translation is somebody else's interpretation, okay? And many times when people translate um, because of the way um, their, their methodology of understanding Islam also can have an effect on their translation. So you as an individual, you um, should learn the Quran in um directly, which is only the only possible way is Arabic. That's why I was a college student. A matter of fact, once I accepted Islam, I joined the MSA at my school, and that really helped me to become a more uh, devoted and dedicated Muslim. Joining the MSA was, I mean, it was the best thing that happened to me. I was a student at Stony Brook University. I joined the university. I mean, I joined the MSA. I became, like I said, a more devoted, dedicated Muslim. And um, after only one semester, I left the school because I got married. Um, and maybe I think four years or five years after that, I was um, working um, in a respiratory therapy department. I was majoring in respiratory therapy and I dropped out and I went to Egypt to study, okay? And the reason why is because I didn't want to have the same problem that I had as being a Christian. And that was, I didn't have a uh, direct uh, contact uh, with the Bible because the Bible itself is the, the, the most original script that they have is in Greek. So I was relying on a translation. So I said, you know what? I want to be able to understand the Quran 
the way it's um, from Arabic and not from somebody else's translation. So I resigned from my job. I jumped on a plane. I went to Egypt. Um, the first time I spent uh, somewhere around a little bit more than a year and a half. Um, and then after that, I went back and forth. I studied for five years. Then I continued my studies online with an Islamic university where I finished um, my bachelor's degree. So that was the five years, which, which is equivalent to like two bachelor's degrees. And then I'm about to finish my master's degree in um, Sharia Islamic, Islamic law. But I'm saying all that is because you as a Muslim, you have to learn Arabic. Well, you learn Arabic at your pace, okay? You learn Arabic at your pace. But you, your goal as a Muslim is to be able to read the Quran. As for the different rules of grammar, morphology, um, what they call um, balago, all these different rules, that is not an obligation on every Muslim, okay? It's just for you to understand the concept. You understand what I'm saying? So this is very important for everybody to understand. You have to learn the Arabic language, all right? So let's begin. Um, my methodology of teaching this class is that I'm gonna take you from a single word to a phrase and then what? To a sentence, all right? So we're gonna go step by step. We're gonna start with a single word, then we're gonna to go to a phrase, and then we're gonna then we're gonna to go to sentences, okay? So the translation for word or the word like word in Arabic is kalima. Okay. Word in Arabic is kalima. Right here. And what kalima means in Arabic, it is a word that indicates or shows what singular, okay? It's one, it's not two, three, four words. Because once you have two, two words or more, it's either a phrase or it's a sentence. But there are some single words that are actually a sentence. Okay, and we'll learn we'll learn that later on. Okay, yes. Uh, say it again. In Arabic. Oh, you can write it. I mean, you know how to write it. Yes, right here. Do you know how to write Arabic? You know the. I mean, you don't have to. We're recording the class, so. You know. Yes. No problem. I think the recording is going to be available. Um, I'm recording on my um, here on my iPad, and I'm going to upload it to my website. I'll give everybody the website, and everything that's here will be on the website. Okay. So the word kalima. So um, wahua ladi la yadulu juzuhu ala ju ala juz in ma'na. What does this mean? A kalima is as well loves who let me look at this up. It's a word that's spoken. Okay, you have to hear it. Okay, it's made up of letters and it has to be heard. Okay. An utterance that indicates a singular word and its parts do not have a meaning by itself. What does that mean? For example, let's take the word daraba. Okay, you see this here? God daraba. Okay. If I separate it, if I separate its parts, I separate the God from the raw from the bat. God by itself doesn't have a meaning. 
Raw by itself doesn't have a meaning. Bad by itself doesn't have a meaning. Just like in English, hello. If I take the H and separate it, H doesn't have a meaning. E doesn't have a meaning. But together, that tartib, that order, H, E, L, L, O, together has a meaning. But separate, it doesn't. It's not like a phrase. Like a phrase, right? is made up of two words or more. I can separate that phrase and each part has its own meaning. Everybody understand? If you don't understand, just let me know, okay? But sometimes when you're reading uh, a text, the word kelima sometimes can actually mean a phrase or a sentence sometimes and i put some examples here like the statement of allah in the quran alam tara kayfa darab allah mathalan tayyiban ka shajar alam tara kayfa darab allah mathalan kalimatan tayyibatan ka shajaratin tayyibatin asluha thabitun wa faruha fi as-sama this word kalima here, Allah says, did you not see the example that Allah made of, um, of a kalima, of a good kalima? It's like a good tree. Its root is firm and then its branches are in the sky. This kalima here is not a word. Allah, what's meant here is la ilaha illallah. That's what's meant. There's nothing worthy of worship except nothing worthy of worship except for Allah. This is what Allah is talking about. This Kelly here is actually La ilaha illallah. That's what is meant. Another example in the hadith of, the, of a, uh, one of the hadith of the Prophet, he said, "Asdaqu kalimatun qalaha al-shair kalimatun kalimatun labid." So the prophet said, the, mo the most truthful statement that any poet has ever said, right, or said, is this is the kalima or the, or the statement of Labid. He was a uh, he's a famous Arab poet, Labid. And what he said was, Isn't everything as um Besides Allah, meaning worship besides Allah, false. So this word here, so this here, Allah kullu shay'in ma khalallah batil, is what is meant by this kalima right here. You understand? Right? So these are examples, and there's plenty more examples, like the hadith of the Prophet, Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who said, kalimatani khafifatani, um, Ala lisani, thaqila tani fil mizani, habiba tani ila rahmani, subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanallah, subhanallah al -Azim. The Prophet said, there are two words that are light on the tongue, but they're heavy on the scales. And, they, and these two statements are beloved by, uh, beloved to, uh, beloved by our Rahman, which is Allah. And those two statements are what? Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, and then Subhanallah al -Azim. So if you see here the word kalima, are you you with us? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what, what I'm what I'm trying to show is that, that kalima in originally means word, but it can be used to mean a phrase or a statement. You understand? It can be used like that in in the text. Okay, yes. So, uh, are you putting, I guess, scenarios as a, as a phrase or something Well, you will understand from like the Siyaka Jumla, like the, um, you understand from this, the sentence structure, that's what it means, but um, not necessarily like different scenarios, no. no. Yes. Oh, I didn't have the translation. No, I'm, I'm that's what you're asking. Yeah, 
I, I can do that for you. Yeah, it's not, it's not a problem. I can do that for you. Um, but see, I'm just concentrating on the word kelima. Yeah, yeah, I'm just concentrating on the word kelima. Um, and we know that a kelima, right? A word is made up of what? Yeah, letters and vowels, right? How to uh, how to and how to kids. So the word for letter in Arabic is what? Huh? Oh, okay. The word in Arabic for letter is how. Okay. And in this hadith of the Prophet, he's using the word how literal, the way it's supposed to be in Arabic, meaning a letter. Where he says, um, Men qara'a harfa min kitabi la, falahu bihi hasana. The prophet said that anyone who reads the Quran, that he will get a hasana, which is like a reward or merit for each letter, right, that he reads. And he said, I didn't mean by that statement Alif Lam Mim is an Alif Lam Mim is a letter, but no, Alif is a letter, Lam is a letter, and Mim. Because I don't know how familiar you are with the Quran. There are certain chapters in the Quran, and they start off with these letters. It's called um, Al Huruf Muqatta. They're broken up letters. So, like they start off Alif Lam Mim, Alif Lam Ra, Ha Mim, uh, Kaf Ha Ya, Ain Saad. You know these Alif Lam Mim Saad. They start off like that, okay? So um, the prophet is saying that, no, each letter actually means, I mean, each letter you will get a reward uh, for reading that um, letter. Now the word harf also can have another meaning. It can actually mean language or it can, or a language or a dialect would be a better word. It can also mean dialect because the Prophet as it's reported by Abdullah ibn Abbas with me, Allah be pleased with him, his father, and the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called, اقرأني جبريا على حرف فلم أزال أستزيده حتى انتهى إلى سبعة أحروف The Prophet alayhi wa sallam said, that Jabril, he taught me, right, um, or recited to me a harf. So people will say, a letter? What do you mean? Like, Because when, when you look at this and you try to translate it yourself, you say, like, he read to me a letter. No, he's reciting to him or teaching him a dialect. Because we know the Quran came down in how many dialects? Seven. Okay. And we only have how many remaining? One, okay? Now, don't get that confused with the different ways of reciting the Quran. No, but it was actually sent in seven different Arabic dialects and they all had the same exact meaning. But we know it led to some issues. So during the time of Uthman, Uthman um, united the Muslims on one dialect, which, is the, uh, which was the Lahaja al Qurayshia. Right, which is the, the dialect of the people of Quraysh, because that was like the main dialect for the Arabs. Even when they uh, um, spoke, used, uh, spoke poetry, they used the uh, Quraysh dialect. So he united the Muslims on that one dialect. Yes. Yeah, seven dialects. Yeah. That the Quran was sent down in seven different dialects, and only one remained that we have now because it's, it led to issues amongst, you know, amongst the Muslims. Like you will have a group of people that this is their dialect and the person leading the Salah, he's reciting in this different dialect. And it just led to confusion and fighting amongst the Muslims. So Uthman, because unity takes precedence. So he wanted to, the Muslims to be united on this one dialect, which is the dialect of the Prophet Muhammad. So that was the only one that actually um, 
That's what that's the one that we use today. Okay, and then he um, he made seven different musahif, different um, Qurans, seven based off with that one dialect, and he sent them out to the different lands. I think we have about two or three left. And one is in a museum in Turkey. Um, one might be in Egypt. Um, I think it's about two or three that are remaining from those original ones that was uh, actually written um, during the time of Uthman. So here he's saying that, that he continued to teach me until he, what, reached seven different dialects. Okay, so the word how to appear actually means what dialect? I'm not gonna test you on any of that. Okay, so nobody be nervous. See, she's ready to write now. She's nervous. <laughs> All right. Um, but my point, my main point was, you have the word how is used literal, where okay, kelima and harf. But then it can be used, we can mean phrase or statement, or like we just mentioned, as the word how to is also used as what? A dialect. So now let's go to the kelima. Let's break now, let's break the, the a kelima. Uh, the last of two accent. Okay, there's like in English we say there's three parts of speech, um, or we say parts of speech, right? Which I don't like to say that. Um, but a kelima is only three types of kelima in Arabic. Only three types. There's no, there's not two, there's no fourth one, there's only three types. And we know in English, they hope you got nouns, pronouns, uh, adjectives, adverbs, you got all these different uh, parts of speech, right, in English. Arabic only has three. And this is why, like some people would translate, for example, uh, adjective, they would say like, uh, this word is an adjective. Um, this word is a pronoun and, but all of that would fall under one of these categories. Okay. Um, so the first category is called an ism. When you look it up in the dictionary, isa means name. But in Arabic grammar, it doesn't mean that. Okay? In Arabic grammar, it doesn't mean that. You good? You sure? Okay. So we have an ism. What is an ism? Okay, so it says here, that which indicates or shows a meaning by itself and is associated um, and is not associated with a time period. Okay, let me explain it. Okay, so any kalima that has a meaning by itself. Like it doesn't need help from other words to give it a meaning, okay? And is not associated with a time period. That word is what? A ism. But one of my scholars that taught me, he said this definition, because many of the scholars of Islam use this definition, he said this definition is not always true. In most cases, it is, okay? But it's not always true, okay? So some examples, like the word Muhammad, okay? Mecca, so Muhammad is a what? A person, the name of a person. Mecca is what? A place, right? And then we have, um, for example, the word kitab, which is a thing. Right? So just like in English, person, place, thing, which is a noun, right? Okay. So basically all nouns fall into the category of ism. All nouns fall into the category of ism. But ism in Arabic is more broad than a noun. 
So all nouns, all persons, places, and things in Arabic would be an ism. Okay. Another example is sobah, which is morning. Okay. But isn't morning, doesn't that deal with a time? Right? Yeah, it's the time of the day, right? That's why my, this, this, one of my teachers said that this definition is, um, it, has, it has exceptions to it. Because sobah is actually an ism, because it's actually, it's associated with time. But I'm going to show you how you can distinguish a ism from the other two parts of speech. Okay? Another word is like the word fethun. Fethun in Arabic means opening, opening. And what's that in English? Oh, English. But what's, what, uh, okay. Opening would be what? Uh, continuous, what is that? Continuous, uh, what would that be in English? We all horrible, right? <laughs> we just studied in elementary school, in junior high school, we got past it, right? And we forget, right? But that would opening would kind of more be in the, like the verb category, right? The verb category, right? Because it's dealing with an action. But in Arabic, it's not, no, it will fall under the category of an ism. Opening, yes. Yeah, you're right. Because, like, you know, it can um, be used as we'll see, as like the, like the subject. So we know nouns are used as a subject, a verb is not, right? Can't use a verb as a subject, but a noun can. So the word fethon uh, would be, um, it would be uh, actually, yeah. So it could be a noun or it could be a verb, but it would fall under the category of a ism, okay? Fatihun. Okay, the word fatihun means the person who's doing the action, the opener. Okay, the opener. Um, maftuh is actually the thing that is being opened. Okay, so all of these would fall under the category of what? A ism. But the one who's opening, the, um, the thing that is opened, that would, the open would fall more under what they call that, um, accusative something, right? Something like that, right? Yeah, which almost like it's in the verb category, okay? Um, or opened, right? So, but in Arabic, it will fall under ism. Nobody get nervous because I'm gonna actually show you how you could distinguish a ism from the other two. Now let's go to the fed. This guy is easy. He's a verb all the way. All the way, this guy's a verb. Okay. Madalla alamana fi nefsihi muqtaran bi zaman. That which indicates a meaning by itself. Like this word by itself. An Arab hears it, he hears this word by itself, then he, he, ha, he doesn't, he understands it right away. All right. He doesn't need another word to help it to give it a meaning. But it's associated with a time period, all the time. It's associated with a time period, okay? So for example, now there's three types. We're not gonna go over these three types today. You have philom uh, modern, which is the past tense, philom modare, which is the present tense, and the philom emr, which is a command. All of them have some, all of them are associated with a time period. Okay, because one is for the past, an action is being done in the past, an action is being done now, and then there's a, a um, command for action or request for action to happen, but after the person said it. Okay, we're not going to go over that today. Yes. Uh, fail. 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 Yes.
And then the last one, which is harf, which we said means letter, but here it doesn't it in grammar. Okay. Mad, so the definition is Madella Alamana fi Radihi, Mithlu Men, Wahal, and then Ms. Hamza, that which indicates a meaning when accompanied with another word. These words, this here, these words here, a harf, cannot stand by itself. Like I could say, for example, Muhammad. Automatically is a meaning that somebody's name is Muhammad. Um, I can say Tawila, right? A table. Right, it has a meaning by itself. It doesn't need another word with it. Um, for example, um, example of a fit, which would be um, ketaba, which is he wrote, yaktubu, he's writing, uktub writes. Okay, by itself. But these words, they have to be connected either with a with a ism or fit, a harf. It, ha it doesn't have it doesn't have a meaning by itself. It has to be connected with a ism or fail. It can't stand by itself. Yes. No, one asks a thousand questions. Come on. That's why I'm here. Uh, uh ism or fail. The verb. English. Um. F. I. And then. How do they use ein? I like. Yeah, like maybe an apostrophe, then with an L or something like that. Yeah, because it, there's nothing that's equivalent uh, in English to an ein. There's not. There's no equivalent. Yeah. Now this is my favorite part right here. You ready? Now we're going to deal with alamat ism. How do we know that the word is an ism? How do we know? Okay. Anytime you see a word that in front of it has alif lam, it's an ism. A fi'l, the verb, cannot take alif lam in front of it. I can't say al kataba. I can't say al yaktubu. I can't say um, al uktub. You cannot do that in Arabic. I can't say al men, al hal. You can't. Never. You will never ever see that. Anytime you see a word that has alif lam, you know the word is a ism. Just to make it simple, like it's some just in your in your mind. What's your name? Aliyah. Just imagine it's yeah, it's some just in your mind, just do it's some noun, noun or verb. Yeah, noun, verb, and for how we would probably do like a maybe like a predicate or something like that. Yeah. But okay, so like I said, anytime you see Aleph Lamb, like here, Albait. At dog, automatically that word is an ism. Okay, say that again. Al bait is um, the house, and al dar means house too. So ya abudu rabba, had al bait, right? Yeah. Even though it's talking about masjid haram in that ayah. Say that again. Yes. Mm -hmm. But let's, um, in terms of translating the words, I don't want to put that on you guys. If y'all want to, I have no problem. When I was when I went when I went overseas, when I first got there, I thought I knew enough Arabic. Um, I had met a sheikh that was here. And he came back from, I think it was either Omar or Hajj. And I was so excited. He was back. I was waiting for him to get there. I was um, staying at a friend's house. I got on the phone. 
He couldn't understand me. I couldn't understand him. He said, go get somebody to translate for you. I understood at least that. So I got somebody to come translate. The person said, the Sheikh said, he's not going to accept you as a student. Go learn Arabic first and then come over. I cried. I left because I only had like $2,000 on me. Some people told me you could take $2,000. This is back in 98. That'll last you like 10 years. You're right. Okay. And I was in Cairo. So I said $2,000. Apartments like, um, 700 June. The school is about that, um, somewhere around that amount, or maybe 300 June, whatever. I said, I'll be back in America in six months. All right? Anti Masidia? You from Egypt? Oh, okay. So I said, Oh, I'll be back. And, um, cried. I memorized about 45 words a day so I could be a student. Next. About six to eight months later, I went out to the village and I'm communicating with him in Arabic. He said, this is a mirror. He said, how can somebody learn Arabic in six to eight months? So if you want me to do an overload, I could definitely do it. <laughs> yes. Um. I think everybody knows that, but if you want to, we can do a private class because I do online classes. Yeah, I do online class. I, I even actually wrote my own book. Yeah, I wrote my own book because what I noticed is that Arabs don't know how to teach us. So yeah, yeah, they don't know how to teach us. So a lot of the books that are out there, um, they're for little Arab kids. You know, um, so I wrote, I put my own book together for someone who Arabic is not their first language. Um, so yeah, I didn't publish it yet. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm still waiting to get it designed, but I've been trial and error using it and it, and it works really good. Well, when we do the classes, if you want to, um, online, um, I'm, that's the book that I'm using. Yeah. Um, okay. The next one is tenween. Okay. Aleph lamb goes at the beginning of a word, and tenween, which is like bummatan, fathatan, kesuratan, right? Anytime you see tenween, you know the words of isa. A fil and a harf cannot take tenween. Never. See, on my ten, on, like waladun, waladen, waladin. Okay? It's two dhammas, two fatha, two kesalas. Okay? If you see that, you know the word it is a isa. Okay. The third alama, the third sign. If you see any word that has ya yeah in front of it, it's called ya uh, onida. Like, I'm from originally from the other side of Queens, right? From the, I'm actually from the project. So, um, like we would say, yo. You know, like, yo, John, okay? In Arabic, they have something is yeah, right? I would say, yeah, Fatima, yeah, Zainabu, yeah, Ahmed, right? If you see this, yeah, that word is an ism. With the exception of yeah, Leitany, that yeah, the scholar said it's not the same yeah, it's another yeah. Yeah, yeah, Leitany, right? Yeah, Leitany, Kuntu Turaba, right? The yeah in that, um, that yeah is for 10B, like to get attention. But this one, uh, nida is for calling. Yes. Right to left. Yeah, all old languages. Yeah, right to left.
should have just a PDF. Yeah. All right. The fourth one, right, is al jar or they call it khat. If you see a word at the end of the word has a kesra, okay? Yeah, if it has a kesra at the end, then the word is an ism. So, like for example, here, fil madrasa t. But there are some words that have kesra at the end. So this, this thing is called, this three vowels. This is something called fatha. This thing right here makes an asa. And then there's a, um, then you have something called kesra, it makes an isa. And then you have something called dhamma, it makes an usa. It's only three vowels. So we have A, E, I, O, U in English. Arabic only has three. Okay? It only has three. Now these three vowels, right? When it comes to grammar, they change. So Muhammad, so like for example, if I said Ja and Muhammad doing, Muhammad came. Then I would say, but I ate to Muhammad then. I saw Muhammad. But it's a fat at the end. Then salam to Allah Muhammad then. I greeted Muhammad. It was a kesra. There's something because of the grammar. That's what caused the end to change in at the end. We're gonna learn all of that, okay? What, what causes the uh, endings to change. Now, as for this kasra, which we're gonna learn very soon, it is caused by something that came in front of you. Okay? Which we're gonna learn soon, okay? It's caused by something that actually came in front of you, which is like the huruf, uh, Job, like that. Um, and then we have something called um subkiba and dafta, which we're gonna learn very soon. All right. The last alama, right? Say, say it again. Rule number four. Okay, if you see a word that has kesra at the end, right? It's an ism. But it was caused by something that came before it. Okay? Because you have some cases in Arabic, because in Arabic, you, you, you're not allowed to have two sukun back to back. It's not, it's not permissible. Okay? For example, if I have the word men, right? Men starts with, uh, ends with a what? Sukun, right? Right? You get it? Men ends with sukun. Everybody got that? And then Allah's name, no, let's say, um, let's say al bait. Okay? What's that word, bait? Yeah. So look, the word al bait, right? This will have a sukun on it, the lamb. Okay? So let's say min al bait, min al bait. Men ends with sukun. And it starts with sukkot. So in Arabic, I have to put a kesra on the min, right? So it would be, so be min el, right? And, right? Or, um, no, no, not that one. Well, no, they will put a fat on that one. They will, um, that would be min el, min el basis. They put a fat on that one. If you have, um, or like, for example, Coleman in that. So you have examples, not that one, because Mina Bait, you will put a fat on that one. Um, but because two Sukuns came back to back, they'll put a Kesra on the one that came before. But it wasn't something, it wasn't caused by um, what we're going to learn later on, which is called Huruf for Jah. But Kesra, just for now, just for now, Kesra is one of the signs to show you that a word, right? To show you that this word is an isa. Now look, now the different signs that we have, some words can have more than one sign. For example, al-madrasa, 
A word can have all of them, but they can have more than one. So al madrasa, right? We say alif lam is a sign, and we say kesar is a sign. So the, we have two different signs here that actually show you that this word can be an isa. The last sign, which is called alama, right? Is al hadith anhu mean, which means that it's the subject. It's the subject of the sentence. The subject of the sentence cannot be a fit. Just like in English, the subject of a sentence can't be a verb. Okay? It can't be a predicate. It can be. It only can be a noun. You understand? So whatever is the subject of the sentence, right? You know that that word is what an ism. So al warada to jamila to the word al warada, which means a rose. I mean the rose. So the rose is beautiful. Okay. Now with this word here, I have two different signs to show me that this word al warada is an ism. It has alif lam, and it's the subject. So I know it's an ism. So I know it's an ism because it's what? It's a, uh, it's a subject. Now here, ihmarat al warada, meaning that the rose became red. Okay? Warada is the subject. Okay? And it has alif lam. So this is the subject. So these are the five. Alif lam. Any word you see with alif lam at the beginning, beginning. Any word that has ten wing, okay, which goes at the end. Any word you see, yeah, which is called yeah and yeah. And whenever you see a word that has uh, the khaf al jar that has kesra at the end, and also number five, that is the subject. Is this too much for you guys? You sure? It's the subject. Yeah. Once you, okay, it's the subject. Is that it's too much? Then you good. Okay. So now, let's go to the island mats for a fair that shows that a fair. How do we know that the word is a fail? How do we know it's not an ism? How do we know it's not a huddle? How do I know that? Let me know everybody's ready. Okay, the first way that you can tell a word is a fail is with this tat with tatni, right? Um, it should be at tat with tatni, right? So um, any word that ends with a tat that has a sukun on it, you know that word is a fail. It is an, you will not find a ism that ends with a ta with sukun on it, nor a hub. When you see a word that ends with ta with sukun, you know that it's what? A fa a ta with ta -ni. So you know that you'll know that this word is an action. And you'll learn later on that it's an action that's for the past. And it's done by a single female. So just from this one letter, you'll know all of that. It's an action, right? It's done by a female and it's only one. Oh, and even to add to it, and it's the third person. It's not the, it's not, it's the person who's what being spoken about. And it's past tense. Yes, um, Emily, right? 
Amalia, yeah. Uh, the word and the uh, this is a tad, it's a letter in Arabic, like I get ABC, right? And it ends with this little symbol over here, which is called Sukkot. Okay? Because we say how many vowels? Three. How many? Three. So then you got something else which is called Sukkot, means that that, that means that that letter doesn't have a vowel. Because you have Fatah Kesarabamma, which are the three vowels. And this one means that it doesn't have a vowel. Right? Ta'ufa'ilat, right? Now, let's count. I mean, sorry, not even count. See this, see the letter here before the one in red, the three tas in red? They all have sukun on them, right? Okay, you see that? This one, they all have sukun. When you see a word at the end that you see it, these you see a tag. This is the tag here. You have these three tags. This one has dhamma, this one has fetha, and this one has kesara. We're gonna learn what all of these mean. This one letter here is actually a pronoun. We're gonna learn that. Okay. Before it, the letter has or the harp. As a sukun, you know that this word here is a fed. When you see these three, any of these three tags, and the letter before has sukun, it's a fed. So these three tags. So we so far we have four different tags. One has a sukun. These three have a harakat, but it's and bumma, but the letter before it has sukun. The third sign, which is called, which is haru and mubara. The way you can memorize these letters is just memorize this one word here, anatu. Memorize this word, anatu. So anatu is made up of an aleph, a noon, a ya, and a ta. So you have to memorize that, anatu. But that's not really important right now. We're going to actually go really into detail um, when it comes to the fifth. Yes. Um, you have this thing called an A2. So let's say it's, there's A and uh, if you want to elongate the A by A Y and T O an A2. Right. And these letters actually go in front of they go in front of the fib. And the letter after them has a sukkun. And not all the time. It's only if it's three letters. Or three, uh, fit those two letters. But don't, but when you see, you see these letters, they go in front, right? So like, Ashurabu, Nashurabu, Yashurabu, Tashurabu, Tashurabina. We'll learn all this means. I'm drinking, we're drinking, he's drinking, she's drinking, and you're drinking. So you know, we'll learn that later on. Because this is a crash course, and hopefully guys, uh, guys, girls, students, um, we can we can extend this to go. You know, you do like a, like a four year course if you want to, you know, extend it. So this is just phase one. And then next semester, you can do something else, open. Um, 
say graduate and you can do you can do it online because like right now I'm using um, Zoom. So um, if you were online, you'd be able to get a whole class and see everything. Okay. But since we don't have students online right now, I'm not staying over there and using the mouse. So um, but anyhow, um, yeah, because now once we like the next we will learn uh, more vocabulary words, phrases, sentences, things like that as we go along. Um, and we can finish a couple of books, yes. Um, is it a um I would it depends on you guys. Like I said, um um you have students. You know, most of they have a full schedule. And um, because I really think like if someone uh, has a lot of free time, you're talking about two years you can get it. Um, you'll be an Arab speaker, you'll understand, you'll understand most of the Quran. I'm gonna tell you like this. Religious Arabic is easier than, than regular day-to-day -day Arabic. Like in the Quran, like most, like most of it is repeated. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's not, it's not really that many words. It's very easy. Like most students, and when we go to study, we, when it comes to like religious texts, um, that's Quran and Hadith, that's the first thing that we, we understand. Then the speech, you know, how to communicate with the Arabic, that takes time. They, they say that you don't really become a real Arab until like 15 years. Yeah, 15 years. But you're gonna get your, like, your, your base, you know, your foundation within your first two years. And see, what I like to do is, I like to give, they like foundation words, and once you learn these words, now you have a dictionary. Like for example, let's say like you knew the word, you, like you know the word base, which means house. So you're reading and you come to a word, it says mens, but you don't know what that means. When you go to the dictionary, like the Arabic, the Arabic dictionary, right? They'll tell you that mens and mean base. So you already have that that one word that's your foundation, but there's so many different ways to say the word house, the faith, manager, the dog, you know, uh, meskin, so on and so forth. There's just so many different word ways to say it, but you have that one word which is your foundation. Like even myself, even at the page that I'm on, um, in terms of knowing Arabic, I'll go to the Quran, I might not know that word, I'll go to the Tafsir. When I look at the text here now, I understand the word because I have those words that are part of my vocabulary that are the foundation, and I'll understand what the professor what he's explaining, what he's saying. So, really, your foundation words might be uh, between 1,000 to 2,000 words. And then, like I said, I want to teach you the different patterns. So, those patterns, like I told you, one word. You can times that sometimes by five or ten. Like ketaba. Like look, look at this. See this here? They all come from sheen, ra, and ba, which has something to do with drinking. But this is I'm drinking, we. Okay, so this pattern itself. So in the past tense, see, this is the past tense. This is the present tense. Okay. Mashro, you know, so once I teach you the patterns and you understand the pattern, you know, give you an understanding of actually what that word or that root would mean within that pattern. Um, what's next? Okay, next one. The whole lamb. If you see any word that after it, lamb comes like lam yelin, walam yulad, lamb. That word is a fair. That la this lamb here can can only come in front of a fair. It doesn't come in front of anything else. 
It's only, yes. No, see this here? This is, you're going to learn these two letters right here. I'm going to teach you. You're going to do class online. Tell them. All right? Um, so, um, when you learn this, this, this is a, this is a left lamb as, has a vowel, and then it's the mean of sukun, which together means it says lamb. And it's for like negation and negates, makes the word uh, past tense. We'll learn that later on. When you see this, right, automatically what comes after it has to be a fair. It can't be an ism, it can't be a heart. Can be. Never. And I should have added one more too. No, I should have added one more. And you know what it is? Okay, when you see Len, this Len here, that too. When you see Len, Len only comes in front of Len will only come in front of a what you would call it, a fed. The last sign, and this is even more, there's even more details to this, but I don't want to get too much. Um, this word means, uh, call up means requesting. If you ever see a word and there's a request to do an action, right? And in this word, it ends with this ya, yeah, which is called ya mukhatiba. Right, when you see this, yeah, right at the end, and before it's a kesara, you know that that word is a fair. And you know it's a word as a command, you're commanding a female. Like, for example, I would tell him, I would say, Inch is sick. I would tell her, I would tell one of uh, you young ladies, Inch is see. So I'm requesting from you to what? Sit, and it, end, and it ends with what? Uh, this, yeah, like, um, even in Surah Maryam, Kuli Washrabi, right? Kuli Aina. Allah is telling Maryam, uh, eat and drink. Mary. Tell her, well, Huzi Ilaiki, right? You know that that word, Huzi, Allah is commanding her. I mean, well, that the girl is not just talking. But anyhow, where's the command comes from Allah? So Maryam, Mary, she's being commanded to uh, do an action. And we know that that word is a fail because it ends with what? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I know some, uh, it was like this mean? Yes. Yeah, but it's not, there's no problem. There's no request for you to do something. Okay. So you have the meaning mixed with, I mean, together with this yeah at the end, which tells you that it's a person. It's meaning my name. Okay. But you're not just going to request it. And then the request is Tolam? Yeah, the word, word, yeah, it means Tolam. So here, it, when I say it should I be, like I'm going to tell you right now, it should I be. Yeah, I'm, com I'm requesting from her to drink. That, this word is a fair. Ism is a, would be, uh, oh, Ism. <laughs> Okay, it's going to be an isa, but it should be is a fair, and it's a certain type of fair, and it's for a certain, and it's for a specific gender. Okay, which we're going to learn. Now, the last one, Alama Tahar, the Har, he's the easiest guy. That's why he has no signs. Or some scholars say the only sign he has is that. 
he doesn't have any of those other signs. So any word that doesn't have any of those, I think it was 10 in total, five and five, any of those signs, we know that they, they can't accept none of those. We know that the word is a what? As a heart. You have to go? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And and I don't know, did you get my website information? Yeah. Uh, I know they can do it. Uh it's very real quick, but I have one more. How do you spell it? Uh F-A-H-M 101.com. Yes. Everybody needs to write that down. Because um, Sean, I'm gonna upload, you're welcome. Upload all the information uh, to the website. F A H M zero one dot com. How long did Say again. Yeah, the verb. One. How do I think it translate that like a predicate or something like that? Um, but this one, it can't take any of those other signs. Like for example, the word uh, men, right? Which means uh, from, okay? It can't take Aleph Lamb. It can't take Ten Wing. You can't put Yeah in front of it. Yeah, I yeah. It can't be the subject. Um, it's not going to take Kessera. It, it won't take uh, ta a Tetni. It won't take the Ta at the end of Sukkot. It won't take uh, any of the Ta with that and that, which is the, like, Shurittu, Shurittu, Shurittu. It won't take none of those. It's not going to take, uh, take this one here as well. Um, you won't see a lamb in front of it, which is actually a heart for self. Um, it won't take lamb, lamb, which is actually a heart of itself. It won't take any of those signs. So the, today we just broke the ice. The three parts of speech are what? A ism, a fe'en, and a, and a heart. Those are the three. And they have signs, okay? All right? They all have signs. So now, um, this is what I want from you guys. Um, let's see what you, uh, much as possible. Uh, I think it's, yeah, there we go. Okay. So what uh, I have vocabulary words that you guys memorize. And all of them are excellent. You want to upload it to the website, okay, and make a special section for King's College. Um, the translations of the words of the words of it. Okay. Like for example, bait, men's and dog by fifty words. That's too much. Sure. Okay. So, like, you have a whole week. Um, so, like, the word Shams, Sor, Haven, the Tab. And what I did was, there's a book that I teach it's called Tabo Assassin. And I took the words out because you told me one is for Quran, right? So, I only took the words out from that book that you'll find in the Quran. So, basically, you have, you have 50 words that you're going to find in the Quran. Yes. Oh, uh, we'll fix it in class. <laughs> or whoever can read um well this in McCall or how do you um how do you pronounce this word? It's not a, it's not a problem. Um you should have another class too for people who can read Arabic. Maybe we'll do that in the future. 
Um, so we did 50 words. Um, we didn't memorize. All right. So what is that? Um, I think it's time's up, right? Yeah. Everybody okay? All right. I just I didn't know exactly because I'm so used to like using a book and I just follow that book, but I just made this up for you guys. Okay? All right, we're gonna wait up. See you next week, inshallah. Um, yes. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, I'll do that for you. Okay. We gotta go.